Jordan, welcome to the Wire to Wire podcast. Nice to be back, man. It's been yeah, a little hiatus, right? Yeah, I just took a little uh, season ending, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's actually interesting because when I was ending that last one, right, my topic was my. I was basically giving my assessment of that, you know, hit piece Rolling Stone article about the weekend show, right? And I was right. saying why. I believe that they were putting out that hit piece months before the show came out. Mm -hmm. And then now the show, all five episodes, they aired. The season is done. Yeah, it seems like there's an episode short, but hey, I'll take it. So there, there's reasons for that, mm -hmm. right? And we can get into all that stuff, but I'm sure you probably have some strong opinions about the show. I know I do. Oh, I do. I do. Because I, I honestly, really, truly, I was quite excited for the show um because i've become quite a fan of i guess that type of cinematography coming off of euphoria and then knowing that they had similar writers or producers for the show i was definitely excited to see what they would have but i was sadly disappointed unfortunately sadly disappointed bro like Okay, before I give you my opinion, yeah, right. Before I hit you with some facts, I would just like to know where this disappointment you have, like, where is this coming from? Yeah, that's that's no problem. Okay, so really and truly, <clears throat> getting into the show, episode one, um, it took me somewhere that was, you know, like the music, the soundtrack. It pulls you in with the soundtrack, the 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 clothes, the fashion the the mansion all that right it draws you in right and then you see that it's it's based on an artist right it's based on jocelyn who is this pop star right um so it's always interesting to see behind the curtains of the music industry right and we see that the, the managers are there at the house and then you see that there's a leaked image right and it's it's very modern today's times, right? Because things get leaked all the time, right? And to see how pop stars go about handling that, that's something that's fascinating, right? So for me, episode one, I was I was drawn on about that, right? The the characters, what was going on, the plot. All right. And then it just veered off from that, right? Episode two, three, four, they're just showing me randomness. They're showing me a uh, man getting uh, getting tasered with a dog collar. They're showing man's dancing in the crib. They're showing me who's that? Sean Leon, a uh, uh, Sean Leon reenactment. They're showing me these next type of mans, and it's just like it was all over the place. They lost the plot, and then really and truly, like it seemed like Tedros, Tetris, or or dollar store. Uh, Prince, as I like to say, with that whole corny ass scene, him looking up at that purple rain poster and like, oh, oh, look, I'm Prince. It, it was terrible. It was a terrible reenactment of the purple rain um, movie that came out in the 80s. It was terrible. Really and truly, they did a terrible job of, I guess, him being that character, being another type of purple rain type character. And I think the weekend just did a terrible job as an actor. He had some good moments, but some moments were just terrible. He just looked sweaty and hot and just, he just looked disgusted, right? And like the scenes were just awkward. And like at the end of the day, it went from he's in control and he, there's some cult that he seems that he's creating. And then it turns into, oh, Jocelyn is in control at the end of the day, right? And they do that whole um cliffhanger or surprise twist at the season finale and it was just it was just nonsense and it was just no explanation of when that change happened or how that shift happened it just happened right and they're singing and dancing they introduced these these different artists that are dancers singers and all that like and they had the one asian girl that they were going to replace jocelyn and then before you know it oh we're not going to replace you we're just going to keep Jocelyn and kick you to the curb. That was a whole waste of time, too. There's a whole bunch of different things and plots and character development that just fell short. And it just led to a dead show, really and truly. I appreciate that they tried something different. And they tried to 
give us a glimpse of the music industry or give us a glimpse of the weekend's debut acting, but it fell short for me overall. And I don't see it going a season through two. I don't see it. I think usually these limited series have six episodes and they got cut down to five. And I think it got cut down to five for a good reason. Uh, and this is a, a forgettable show. It'll be forgotten by the end of the summer. And uh, I uh, end my case. Okay. I completely wholeheartedly disagree. Okay. I think my guess is that you probably was re you probably were reading Twitter before you actually watched the show. Okay, here we so, go. Yeah. So you went into yeah. it with this bias of what people on the internet were saying. Okay. So it planted seeds. So the character development was there because for, who? Was, for for all characters involved. Okay. Okay. So even with the weekend's character, we go into it thinking that he's this manipulative guy, right? who's trying to use her right mm -hmm. and then when you see once you get to around episode four once you get to around episode three four and then you get to the ending you start to realize that it was actually her who was basically trying to use him because she saw that he could bring the creativity and get her out of the slump that she was in musically right right so that was one aspect of what you had going on and in terms of the tasering right so if you notice there was one scene where he was at his club and then he had the taser on the on the black dude uh isaac mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. isaac with a z right? yeah, yeah. Sean, Sean Leon, no? <laughs> so one of, one of those artists i don't know <laughs> so you see how he kept shocking you should him. know you should know exo that's your whole uh click right yeah, so he, I want to say click, but you see how we kept like shocking him and saying him, listen, you're a star, right? You're a star. And then if you saw at the end when they got to episode five, mm -hmm. the way he was putting on his show. So that's because that he was priming them. So although his methods may have seemed a little bit, I mean, I would say unconventional. It ended up working because it wasn't believable. It was it was not believable. There's a bunch of scenes that you just cannot believe, or just I couldn't buy into the character at the end of the day. Okay, like, let me ask really, you this. Yeah, go ahead. Let me ask you this because you yeah. said that his character was weird and sweaty yeah. and all that stuff, right? Yeah. What's yeah, interesting yeah. to me is. When he did this, when but like when he was doing press for the show and he was talking about the show, he says, "My character is supposed to be creepy, hated, yeah, awkward, yeah, blah, and make blah, people blah, uncomfortable." Yeah. Right. And then when the, he goes out there and he does it, oh, he's such a bad actor. He plays no. such a creepy guy. Like, no, 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 no. He no. literally. That's not. He that's said not he my defense, though. That's not my defense. It's not that he. Yeah, I've seen him. I've seen him tweeting right to defend himself. All day on Twitter. I saw him every, after every episode on Twitter. Yeah, you're supposed to hate me, blah, blah, blah. He tried to, get, really and truly, it's a reverse psychology this media thing, trolling. That's what he was doing. He was on social media trolling, try to garner up more hate, more hate about his character so more people would, wait, would watch it, right? And again, it just if that fell short. And yes, of course, that was how it was supposed to be. But again, if he's supposed to be this, villain or not even anti-hero a villain usually you end up appreciating a villain right for how dark or terrorizing they may be and it was it was there was just weak parts to it right it, it wasn't believable when he had that scene where he's it early on in the season when he he slaps that one guy that's um the doctor, I believe, that was massaging her, whatever the case may be, or looking at Jocelyn, and he slaps him and he tells him off. Like it was just, it was just corny at the end of the day. It was really corny, and I really didn't buy into it. And really and truly, let me ask you this: out of all the weekend characters we've seen that he's brought forth through his music, are we gonna say that this Tedros character is one of the best characters that he's provided us? as consumers honestly i would say so because i just saying that no it's not that i'm just saying <laughs> that, but i would say so because he actually dived in well he dives into his other stuff but with this like with after hours it was just the music there was no audio right 
Mm-hmm. With Donna Fam, it, the focus was just on the music. There was no actual story. There was visuals. There was visuals. No, there was visuals, but there wasn't like a script, right? Yeah. It's just he's telling, he's narrating a story through visuals, but there's right. not an actual script. With this, there's actually a story, there's script, there's dialogue. And right? it fell there's short. Plot. I don't think it fell short. I thought the storyline was not good. They told <laughs> a story. They told a good story. Like, it literally showed that this girl was in a rut, right? She was in a downward spiral. Here's this, here this guy comes with this unconventional method who thinks that he has her right where she wants her, but the whole time she has him right where she wants him because she can use him as a way to, you know, leverage and re-spark that creativity that was missing for so long. I, I was really, really and truly, I heard this take, right? And I feel like, it would have been better off as a movie. It, they try to drag out a limited series that was clearly very limited for it to be five episodes. And it could have been, if that was put into a condensed two and a half hour movie, I think it would end up being better because they had some scenes that just fell flat and they just had things that just didn't make sense. And it's almost like they do a bunch of things at you and then you forgot about it right away, right? And then the focus really and truly was just Jocelyn and Ted Phillips, right? The managers, right? The art, the man, like Jocelyn's managers, like I think they did a good job, but again, it's just like they just have their one liners, and then, then it's just a lot of Ted Jones and Jocelyn, and just like I don't know, really and truly, like there wasn't much to the show. I think the best thing that came out of the show was the music. So okay. that's so, what he needs to focus on. Just the music and the acting. And I said this before, pre-pod, that if The weekend removed himself from the show and took a Drake role as an executive director, I think this show ends up being better. Okay. I think he did a pretty good job with the acting. I thought he was a very convincing... I thought I thought he played a convincing creep, Right. I mean, clearly, because people are all over Twitter and writing all these news art- news articles. Oh, his character is so creepy. Well, then he did his job. He came off the way he intended to. But I think, really and truly, there was two things that is being held against the show. One of them, I think, was uh, one of the um, co-directors or co one of the co-producers on it, Sam Levinson. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of people, especially in mainstream media, they have a gripe with him because of the work that he does on Euphoria Mm -hmm. and sometimes the way he depicts certain characters. So I think a lot of that animosity and tension that was there towards him from that show, it spilled over into this series. And I think The Weeknd was just this guy who kind of just got caught in the line of fire, right? So I think that's number one. I think number two, that Rolling Stone article, Mm-hmm. that already planted seeds of the show before people even got a chance to actually see it for themselves, right? And then I think number three, to be honest, I think with The weekend, I think he got into acting a little bit late in his career. And I'll explain to you what I mean by that. So if you look at a guy like 50 Cent, for example, right? His career took off in 03, by 05, he was doing Get Rich or Die Trying. And then he started doing movies, right? So he did it early in his career. If you look at Eminem, he started blowing up like 99, 2000. By 2002, he already did 8 Mile. So he was still early in his career where he could kind of make that pivot towards acting. But I think with The weekend, people have been following his career since 2011. And all this body of work that he's put out since that time, he finally goes into acting 12 years later. By that time, people already have an established image in their mind of who he is and what his brand is. And not many people even knew what his voice sounded like. You know, I'm talking in terms of speaking until they watched the show, some of them. Right. So they already had a a perception of his brand. So it's very difficult for him to try to, rebrand himself or recreate himself at 12 years post the start of his mainstream career. So I think with those factors involved, I think the show was playing behind the eight ball from the jump. 
Mm -hmm. And I think if you exclude those factors and people just watch the show with an open mind, no social media bias, none of that Rolling Stone stuff, I really do think people would have actually looked at the show and enjoyed it for what it was, which it was just meant to be a fun, it was meant to be a fun, awkward show, but it was also meant to kind of tell a little bit about the pressures that people, that artists in the industry face. And I'll give you an example of that. So I believe it was episode three where he's talking to Jocelyn's creative director, right? And he was like, let's just say you had Carte Blanche. And people were writing think pieces like, oh, he said the word wrong. The dude speaks French. He knows that he, <laughs> like, he knows he said it wrong. Yeah. It's just that he's meant to use, he's meant to use dialogue as a way to show that the guy Tedros is not a very sharp guy. Yeah. And, I mean, yeah, I, there's definitely some comedic um, relief to it. And I feel like you were supposed to laugh, but I feel like it, it gave such a serious tone to it, the way you're just like, you're looking, you viewed it as such a serious, dramatic show. But I feel like there was a lot of comedy in it that probably went over people's heads. Yeah, like... One of them went over your head, like when he went to the doctor and he slapped him. That was meant to be a humorous thing. To yeah, say. yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, I laughed. Like, for sure. what the hell? Like, that didn't even like escalate. Or even the part when he took her shopping and then he's going to the guy, the security works. Are like, are you looking at my girl? Look at her again. Let me catch you looking at her again. That like th this dude's not threatening. Yeah, but it's not meant to be threatening. It's like you're kind of laughing at it. <laughs> like, this guy takes himself that seriously. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So I think. Like I said, those three factors that I mentioned, I think it kind of made people look at the show in a different light than they probably should have. Yeah, I think that that last point you made is very strong, a strong point in terms of um, Weekend's acting, in terms of he had a, a, a snippet in a previous movie, I believe, wasn't it? Uh, Uncut Gems, yeah. Uncut Gems, right? He had that little snippet, right? And that's a little sneak peek and like, you know, he's there and he's gone, right? But that's... People will understand that and be like, okay, you know, it's the weekend. So it's more so like a, a cameo rather than acting. For him to go to like a, a cameo role to now being a main character or a supporting role, it's like, it's a lot, right? And like you mentioned, like, no one is used to what is weekend as an actor? What is Abel as an actor? People have never seen it. What does he sound like? What is his mannerism? We don't know what that is. Wait, what type of role fits him the greatest? We don't know that, right? And I feel like it's difficult for this to be his debut when they had it, when he had so much screen time. That's why maybe I'm on the side of maybe if he was behind the scenes, he would have done a better job. Or maybe if he was like a creative director in creative director role in the show, where like they're there but they're not there all the time maybe he does a better job because I just feel like it was difficult for him to take on such a massive role and it being like his show, like a lot of pressure was on him. And I don't think it helps him as an actor going forward. Like people don't look at his role or his performance in the idol and look forward and be like, okay, I want to see Abel in another show or another movie. Right. People aren't going to look like that. People aren't going to look for like, uh, when, when are we going to see Abel again, right? It would be nice to see Abel and something else. Like, I feel like this puts a, a sour taste in a lot of consumers' mouth in terms of him in that role. I don't know. But business, maybe maybe he should stick to the music business because maybe acting is not really his, his ballpark. So it could go either way. Like I said, I don't really think that he was that bad of, bad of an actor, right? And people are going to say, oh, well, you're biased. It's not being biased. I just don't think, <laughs> I don't think he was a bad actor. I thought he conveyed the character well. I just think people were trying to take him too seriously mm -hmm. or take his character too seriously. But if you look at it for what it was, I think he hit the nail on the head. But I will say that he has another movie that he just uh, finished shooting mm -hmm. uh, with some actress. I believe her name is uh, Jenna Ortega or something like that. Oh, she isn't she... Uh... Oh, she's in um she she did a big movie I forget, but I I'm familiar with the name. Yeah, so they have a movie coming out, so I think 
that movie has to come out. And then I think that movie, I think, will be a better measuring stick in terms mm-hmm. of in terms of what his future career in Hollywood would look like. Yeah. So maybe for certain audiences, there might be more pressure when that movie comes out to see how he'll deliver as an actor. But one thing I know about Hollywood is like there's always there's always second and third chances, bro. Like there's so much actors who I saw that I thought they were terrible, but they've gone on to get plenty of roles, right? Yeah. So I think if he keeps, you know, pursuing Hollywood enough and if he really wants to dive into this thing, I think there'll always be a space for him in it. But we'll see what the reception is like when that movie comes out. Because like people said LeBron was a brilliant actor after train wreck. Yeah. Right? Well LeBron but, just needs to stick to basketball. Okay. But you shut see up, shut up and dribble. All right. But people, and coach <laughs> too now. <laughs> so people were like, oh, he was a great after he was a great actor after train wreck. Mm-hmm. But then with Space Jam 2, there was mixed reviews on it, right? Right. So bad reviews, yeah. And <laughs> he continued well some people <laughs> So I think like so I think there'll always be space for him in it, but it'll be interesting to see how that movie plays out. Um, I don't think he needs to worry about being behind the scenes just yet. I do think that is he the greatest actor we've ever seen? No, but he's not the worst actor we've ever seen either. So yeah, of course there's always going to be room for improvement. But yeah. if we're always going to compare his acting ability to the greatness of his musical ability, it's always going to come up short, bro. Right. But even with that being said, yeah. to me, the idol had one of the greatest soundtracks that ever accompanied a project. I wouldn't say greatest, but it's good. One of it's good. It's good. <laughs> but I feel like I feel like the bad, like I guess, stigma around the show is almost clouding the music. Like the promotion of the music is almost like if you're not like looking for it. You're not really gonna see it, or or they're not playing it. Like the radio is not playing it. Like, and you know how the weekend goes. If the weekend drops music, you're hearing it in malls, in in on on radio, everywhere. I don't feel, think you're really hearing the soundtrack like that, and it's it's odd. I, think. I hear I hear popular a lot. Popular. I hear popular. Popular, you hear a lot. But, but other the- than that, but not really. But he he went in a unique way because like he dropped. Um, the music episodically, right? So like every weekend when the, the when the episode drop, he would drop like two or three songs, right? Yeah, and, and now it's, it's all out in and like tough, separate cause packages. It, yeah, because like it's tough because the thing is like if he's doing songs every episode, right? Let's just say he's doing on average three songs every every episode. There's five episodes. That's about 15 new songs, right? Yeah. All 15 songs are not going to chart. You know what I mean? Because some of them yeah. are just tracks with some of the like uh, the supporting the, actors. Yeah. So musically, I'm not really checking for Isaac like that. You know I mean? Yeah, exactly. I'm not checking for Lily, no. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, so it, it's not always going to meet expectation to fall short. But usually with every movie or show, there's always that one standout song. So mm-hmm. using the examples earlier, like um, with, with like 8 Mile, there was Lose Yourself. Yeah. Right. So there's always going to be that standout. So for this one, it was popular. Yeah, right? Playboy. So, yeah. So it did its job. Like now, it's getting its radio airtime. It's it's going on some like Spotify charts and stuff. So it's yeah. doing what it's supposed to do, right? So I'm not willing to go and say that this whole venture was a failure because they said it was going to be the show of the summer. Mm-hmm. People have been talking about it all summer so far, good or bad. All mm-hmm. publicity is good publicity, right? Like you said, content over everything. So. Yeah, yeah, it's your, it's right. I mean, it's right. But again, I just I just don't know where they what where this show stands in the future, right? I don't think it's something we we really come back to or we look back at as like remember that idol show. I, I don't think that's ever going to be a, a topic of discussion. To yeah. Be honest. So fair enough, but yeah. you know, do you think there'll be a season two, or do you think it's just a. a this one limited series and that's that. I have my, like, I would like to see a season two personally, mm-hmm. but I doubt there would be only just because, because usually, you know, when shows come out by like the second or third episode, 
Yeah. The network will come out and say, we've already renewed it for another season. Right. So the fact that they didn't do that with this one, I think makes me a little bit cautious. It's not looking good, bro. And also, <laughs> too, the fact that it was meant to be six, they brought it down to five. Yeah. I think that part makes me a little bit cautious, too. But I think with them, like at HBO, if I had to make a guess, I'm not inside these rooms. I don't know. Mm. But if I had to make a guess, based on the amount of engagement it did on social media, they, I, I'm assuming they would probably be open to bringing it back to another, for, for another season under the condition that they probably bring in more seasoned veteran writers. But I think it's tough because right now Hollywood has a writer strike. Right. But I imagine based on those popularity metrics, no pun intended, <laughs> they would probably be open to bringing it back with more veteran seasoned writers. Mm -hmm. But I think because of all the negativity and vitriol that it got from like mainstream media, I think HBO will just kind of buckle and say, hey, you know, it's been a good run, but... I think, you know, it was a limited series and we don't want to bring it back for a season two. So that's kind of where I'm leaning towards, but I wouldn't be surprised if it was to come back for a second season, though. Okay. Okay.